family and friends, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior. Okay? <laughs> Greetings to our Facebook family and friends. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Jay Haynes of the great and glorious church of Second Chance True Gospel Ministry. Amen. We believe, amen. I'm calling them things to mean as who they are, amen. I, I believe that God is doing something great and mighty behind the scenes, amen. Yeah. So I'm going to call those things, and I encourage you this season to call those things that be not as, they, as, as though they are. Call the things that you want God to do in your life as they are, amen, because that we operate in faith. We don't operate on what we see because I'll be honest with you, and in, in, some of you can attest by Facebook or YouTube, if I walked by what I saw, I'd be a goner right now. I would not even be up here right now. I'd be somewhere in, some, in a corner, amen, but I'm not walking by what I see. We walk by faith and not by sight. So we praise God, amen, that we are faith people, amen, that we're calling it the way I want God to do it in my life. And it's all for the honor and glory of God, not to put myself or yourself on a pedestal, but we want God to be magnified. We want God to be glorified in our life. Amen. We're located right behind the Walgreens in Benton Harbor on 1662 Milton Avenue. And we count it a blessing because God has blessed us, not only this day, but in this season, to see his, his hand move on our life like never before. We thank God for those that are viewing by Facebook and YouTube. And, you know, I want to, I want to say a shout out to our uh, church family in Texas. Uh, to Kim and, and uh, Alex, amen, they're looking at us by Facebook. You know, we send encouraging words. So I want to say to the folks in Texas that's looking at us, thank you for the encouraging letters. For the family, our church family in Louisiana, I want to say thank you, amen, for the encouraging letters that you send uh, to us. So we thank God for you for viewing us on Facebook this morning. And to all of, the, all of you that are viewing, amen, we thank God that because this is a day that he has made. Yeah. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you uh, Jesus, our Savior. And, you know, it, it's so easy in this time and season, amen, to get so caught up in gift wrapping and, 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 and to buying gifts that we forget, and in so many words, and it's being used, this language is being used all around the world, uh, to forget the reason for the season. Uh, to forget about what Jesus has done in our life, and because we get so get, get, we get so uh, caught up in gift giving and, and giving things to other people that we forget what this season is all about. You know, Clarissa, Clarissa did a beautiful illustration or a song about the baby Jesus. It's about baby Jesus coming into this world in swaddling clothing when when the world was looking for a Roman uh, somebody to take over the Roman Empire. There's somebody that's going to take a big whip or a big stick and just beat down the enemies of the children of God. And God said, I, I'm not coming like that. Mm -hmm. I am not coming like that. I'm coming in swaddling clothing in a major with two uh, young, uh, young teenagers, or young adults, a man that didn't have a lot of money, that were barely making it. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said that even when, when Mary got pregnant, Joseph was getting ready to leave her because he thought he was cheating on her. So they, they, it was a lot of chaos going on. Didn't have a room for he, even to lay his head. The Bible said that Jesus even says, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Even when he came into this world, nowhere to lay his head for Mary and Joseph to bring him into the world. Amen. And I want to encourage you, when I think about that story, what we're expecting, what we're looking for, is sometimes God doesn't bring it in that form or fashion. He brought Jesus in swaddling clothing. I want to I will encourage you and, and make you aware this morning that there are people that's going to come across your path that don't look like Christians, that probably don't even talk like Christians, that you wouldn't say they don't even mount up to that. That's not the way it's supposed to look. The scripture says be careful because sometimes we entertain angels unaware. That you're entertaining people, that you're in, in the presence of people that you thought were all of that and they're not all of that. And that could be your blessing. Don't ignore that in this season. When you come across people. Amen. That, that, that very person that you shot away from. That, that very person that you say, I don't want to have anything to do with. Could be your blessing. The Bible says that when the wise men and even the angels begin to glorify God. Amen. Because baby Jesus. This is a time and a moment and a season in our life 
that we need to give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. This is a time in our life that in, in a season, in the Christmas season, to just to enter into the presence of God, to let God just have his way in your life. Amen. And to get excited <clears throat> on the 25th that God's got a gift for you that no man, no person can even, uh, that no man or woman can give to you. And that's Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you this, this Christmas season, or even on the 25th, when you wake up in the morning, begin to thank and praise God that he gave us the best gift that he, we could ever imagine. He gave it, God gave his only begotten son. He gave Jesus Christ so that we can have life and that we can have it more abundantly. He gave us Jesus, amen, so that, that we can experience life, that we can be a blessing to other people. Amen. I just want to encourage you this morning, amen, to, to celebrate Jesus, although many people are celebrating, and, and each year, a lot of people don't even understand Christmas. They just don't get all excited. You know, the, the church looks nice, thank God, for our, our young folks and the folks that help us decorate the church. It looks really nice, and I like to see the trees, and I like to see the gifts. But that's not the reason for Christmas. Right. The reason for Christmas is to remember Jesus Christ yeah. and what he did in our lives. Yeah. And to begin to reminisce, amen, in front of this uh, table here, we said, in remembrance of him. Mm -hmm. Not just in the communion, but remember how far he has brought you from. Yeah. You may need to sit back on, on, Christmas, uh, on, day, uh, on Christmas day and begin to reminisce how far God has brought you from. Yeah. How, the near-death situations, the near death car accidents, the, those that have, may have had COVID, amen, and right now COVID's running rapid in this country, amen, are working in the hospital, and we are, have over 100 patients at the, at the peak of the COVID, COVID last year, we only had 26 uh, patients in the hospital, now we have over 100, amen. Was in cold yellow, now we're in cold red, amen. Running rapid, workers are being overworked, nurses are being overworked, doctors are being overworked, people are tired, amen. We're living in a day and time, amen, that things are happening, and that's the reason why we need to even get closer to God, yes. to get in the yes. presence of God, because you don't know, it could be COVID, it could be a car accident, it could be something that hits your life that you don't even know what's going to happen. But thank God, amen, that we don't have the, the COVID virus, amen. For those that are sitting in here, amen, but I do want to encourage you, let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's uh, let's uh, 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 be careful. Amen. I'll just say, be careful. Amen. People are preoccupied with shopping and, and all kinds of activities. Amen. In this day and time, and the Bible said that the angel said in Luke the second chapter, in the eighth verse and through the tenth verse, it said, in the same region where there was some shepherd staying out in the field and keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great news, joy which will be for all people, not just for you. Jesus Christ came, came to give joy in the midst of your circumstances. No matter what you're uh, going through, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Yeah. To find joy in the midst of chaos, to find joy in the midst of situation. Yeah. The message, message was clearly from the angel. Mm -hmm. A joyous message when everything was going wayward, when everything was going bad, when the Jewish people thought that, hey, Jesus is coming and he's going to, he's going to deliver us, he's going to set us free, but he, he didn't come the way that they expected him to come. Amen. Amen. Christ is even now present. The scripture says, and though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of his glory. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We don't see him. We can't touch him. Amen. All we know is what he did over 2,000 years, yes. years ago. What we know is that he came and changed some of our lives. Yes. He changed us around. We were sinking in sand, but God, Jesus, came into our life and changed us around. And that testimony, amen, you know it for a fact because he did it for you. And that's the reason why I like testimonies. That's the reason why I like a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because when you know him personally, and you're not knowing him through a church, you're not knowing him through a pastor, but you're knowing him through reading your word. You're knowing him through the, the, the situations and circumstances that, that you've gone through. And the Bible says we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. That's how, we, that's how we overcome. 
And for those of you that don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you, especially by YouTube and, and Facebook and those who are sitting in this audience, if you don't have a personal relationship with him, sometimes what I'm saying up here can be foreign to you. He okay. said, it sounds good, but I have never experienced yeah. that. You know, you, you won't experience until you actually just step into it. Right. Until right. you take the step that Peter took and said, I need to step into this. Because what I'm hearing sounds good. Sometimes it even feels good. But you don't get the full impact of it until you actually step into it. Until you surrender all and say, God, here I am. This Christmas season, I challenge you. Amen. To step into the things of God. Get hungry about the things of God. Let your mouth get dry and thirsty and say, God, the only thing that's going to satisfy this foam around my mouth, the only thing that's going to satisfy this dryness that's in my heart is knowing you and knowing you and, and, and you and your crucifixion. Knowing you on a personal basis. That's what Jesus Christ came for. Yes. Jesus Christ came for a day for a person that he that we can individually know him. Mm -hmm. Scripture said God is no respect of a person. Yes. God loves everybody in everybody. this world. And they know and, 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 and it's at no certain levels that God loves one more than the other. Right. And you would say, Well, Pastor, how, how do you know that? And, and 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 what makes God love me more? What makes God love me more is the more I spend time in his presence. Yeah. The more time I push the plate back, the more time I push time back, the more, uh, the more that I, I, I spend time and say, no, I'm not going to let the phone, I'm not going to let Facebook, I'm not going to let Instagram, I'm not going to let uh, shopping get in my way of serving God. I'm, right. God, I'm going to take right. this time out for you and seek you, and yeah. I'm going to find you because if God, the Bible says if you seek him, you will find him. Yeah. And that's on the individual basis. That's when you're by yourself in your room, all by yourself, and say, God, I, I need to know you. Yeah. I need to know, I need to know the and know you in the power of your resurrection. I need to know you. I need to know you for myself. Uh -huh. I need to experience you. I want your love. I, I I want my heart just to flutter every time I think about you. And say so, some people in there say, Well, I my heart doesn't flutter when I think about Christ. Amen. But I'm telling you, once you spend time with, with, with folks, you know, amen. My heart flutters still when I think about my wife of 38 years. Amen. My heart beats. Amen. My heart flutters. Amen. Amen. Because it's, it's vibrant. It's hot. It's, 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 it's exciting. Amen. Because we continue to make it exciting. You got to make your uh, uh, your relationship with your spouse, with your with your Lord, make it exciting that every time that you get into the relationship with it, oh, we're gonna make we're gonna fire this thing up, amen. We gonna hug and kill you. I mean, we are going to fire it up. And I'm just using a marriage relationship, but I want to use that in your relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. That every time you come into his uh, his presence. You know, if you want to kiss Jesus, you can kiss him, amen. Yeah. You can hug him, amen. You can come into his presence and say, God, I just want to have an intimate relationship with you. Yeah. And God will never let you down. That's right. Every time you say, I, I, I'm coming in in your presence, I don't want to be intimate with you, God. I want you to satisfy my needs. I, I, I want you to, uh, to rock my world, amen. Yeah. I want my heart to flood. I want my heart to beat every time I get into your presence, amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. That's what Jesus came for. Yeah. But, you know, he, he's not going to knock the doors of your heart, heart down. The scripture says, and I think it's in Revelations 3 and 20, it says, I stand at the door and I knock. Oh, yeah. And I say, please let me in. Please let me. Because he made us creatures please. of choice, because he made us creatures to, that we can make up our own mind, God says, I'm waiting. I'm not going to show you my glory until you let me in. Okay. Now, you may get a glimpse of it, but I'm not going to show you the full glory. I'm not even going to show you the full plan that I have for your life. Okay. And the scripture says he definitely got a plan for your life. A plan of good and not of evil to give you a great and glorious end. Yeah. But the Bible says you don't get the fulfillment of that until I open the door of my heart and say, God, come in. Come on in Jesus. And take all of me. Yeah. Surrender all of You got to surrender all to God. Don't just give him a, a part of your life. God says, I want all of you. Just as the song says, all of you. God says, I want all of you. I don't want you to create any idols in your life. I don't want you to put anything before me because God says, I'm a jealous guy. Yeah. He says, I'm jealous. He said, I love you so much, I don't want to share you with nobody. All right. Because what he has for you, can't no, nobody compare to it. That's right. The blessings that God has for each one of us in this room, it can't even be compared to. The yeah. scripture says, heaven and earth is going to pass away. Yeah. But God said, my word is never going to pass yeah. away. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, you might have a friend. I stick closer than a brother. I stick closer than a relative. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'll stick closer to you than anything that you can ever even imagine. Oh, yeah. But he said, you've got to let me in. You've got to try me. 
Amen. And don't get upset when things don't go your way. Yeah. Don't get upset when, when life throws you a curve and you say, well, God, I didn't get in this thing to go through the trials and the tribulations. Scripture says the trials and tribulations come to make you strong. Oh, yeah. Come to make you strong. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So when, when you're going through, keep Jesus on your mind, the Christmas announcement. For today in the city of David, there has been born a Savior. Amen. And people get that confused. A Savior, Jesus. Called, uh, called our Savior. Jesus, who came into the world to redeem us of our sins. Amen. To forgive us of our sins. While we, the Bible says while we were yet in sin, amen, Christ loved us. Yeah. He said, I love you so much. While you're right in the midst of your situation, right in the midst of your addiction, right in the midst of your habits, right in the midst of those things that you feel like you can't get, you can't get rid of, and to be truth be told, you can't get rid of. That's right. You know, step 12 program, uh, you know, they, they may be good, but Jesus can get you out of those things oh, all yeah. by himself. Yeah. Yeah. Scripture yeah. says what is impossible with man is possible with God. Yeah. That with, what you tried out in the world, amen, God said, just try me. Yeah. Yeah. Just try me and then get connected with me, not only through fellowship in prayer and reading the word of God, but with other saints. Mm. Scripture says forsake not the assembling of yes. yourself together. Yes. Don't you know every time you come in the presence of other believers that God has something for you? Even if it's not a word, sometimes it's just the presence yes. of another uh, uh, a believer. Being in the presence yes. and saying, man, I feel a goodness. I feel a power coming off of you. Yes. The scripture says that even the, the power was on Peter, so I believe it was Peter, that when Peter would walk past folks, his shadow mm -hmm. healed folks. What an anointing. Yes. Amen. This when, just when he walked past somebody, somebody was healed. I praise God for that kind of anointing. Amen. Amen. I praise God. I, I ask God to give that type of anointing. But even if not, amen, your presence, amen, sometimes it's just showing up. Sometimes it's just showing up at a funeral. Amen. And just being there, say, you know, I saw you there. Didn't have to say nothing, but I saw you there. And, and it, it, it says a whole lot. When I look at all the faces now, my heart is overjoyed when I see the faces of those that are sitting here, that you're here, amen, and that we're encouraging one another, that we're picking one another up, amen. The scripture says, and I believe in the Bible, that when there's two or three gathered in his name, that he's in the midst. There's more than three of us here right now, amen. And you know, God is in the midst. Can you imagine that the holy angels are moving around this building, amen? And, he, and he's probably, t and not probably, he's touching hearts and minds of yes, individuals. Yes. He's touching you right now. He's, he's dropping a vision. He may be dropping a word in you right now. He's getting you prepared for, some, he's getting you prepared for something great and grandeur and glorious that you can't even begin to imagine. He said because of your obedience today, some of you may have struggled even coming here. Some of you may say, hey, I'm not going to watch you this Sunday. But because of your obedience, he said, I, I'm going to press in. Yes. I didn't let uh, something keep me from coming to that's church right, today. Right. I didn't let something keep me from hearing the word of God today. Don't you know God says obedience is better than sacrifice? Amen. That when we're obedient to God, that God blesses us. When we're obedient children, God just wants to flourish down on us. Amen. Jesus came to save us from condemnation. From our past. From the things that, that try to hold us back. Or the things that people say about us. The condemnation that you begin to think about your past and say, man, I, I really messed up. I've made some really bad mistakes in the past. And scripture says, uh, forgetting those things that are past. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. This is a new season for all of us. Too. In this season, this is a new season. It's going to be a great season. It's going to be a season of miracles. Amen. With all that's going on in the world right now, with the finances, with the virus, amen, and God's still su sustaining his people. God's going to sustain us. Amen. God's going to keep us. And the scripture tells us that no devil demon can take us out of the yes. hand of God. That once, I, once we have made our mind up that I'm going to stay in the will of God. Now, I, I be honest, I believe that you can walk out of the will of God. But as long as I, I have a made up mind to stay in the will of God, God says, I'll keep you. God says, I'll keep you. I'll let no... Uh, I, I won't let nothing harm you or nothing come against you. Peter says, you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver and gold from your feudal ways of life, inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood of the Lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. We were bought with silver and gold. Silver and gold could not replace or could not buy the things that God has for you. I don't care all the money that you make, all the gifts that you get are not going to replace the love and the peace that God has for you. I don't care how much you give. 
And I'm telling you, we're going to be happy, and you're going to open up gifts this Christmas, and we're going to be happy, and sometimes you might not be so happy because it may not be the gift you want, but you'll probably be happy about some of the gifts that you get, and you get excited. You know, when the little kids wake up in the morning on Christmas, they get so excited because they got the gift, but you know, nothing can replace the peace and the joy that yeah. Jesus can give. Yeah. Amen. That's the best gift that God has ever given us was Jesus Christ. And the best gift that we can ever give to him is our life. That's right. And say, God, here I am. Here I am. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of doing my own thing. Jesus, I'm giving it up this year for you because I want to see your glory in my life. Amen. 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 The only way to save us from hopeless conditions uh, is to believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Bible said he is the son of God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, according to uh, Colossians 1 and 15. Luke 24 chapter says, Jesus said that repentance for forgiveness of sin will be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with the power. Amen. Jesus gives us a power. Jesus said, I'm going away. I came here to redeem mankind, but I'm going away, and I'm going to send you, I call it the Holy Ghost. Okay. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, because he's going to rest, rule, and abide within you. Scripture tells us in 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Once we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and the Spirit of God comes in us, you got a power, you got a dunamis, you got a dynamite inside you that cannot be compared to anything in this world. Amen. And God says, I want to show you that dynamite. I want to show you that explosiveness. I want to show you great and glorious things uh, in your life. He said, but you've got to accept me. You've got to be hungry after me. Scripture tells us in Romans 10, chapter, it says that we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believes into righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. Jesus, I made this thing so simple, even a baby can understand it. He said, it's not hard. We make it hard because we think we have to work to get into the kingdom of God. We think we have to work, amen, to get God's favor. And scripture tells us it's by grace that you're saved. Yeah. Nobody in here heard or, or deserved to be saved or deserved to be sitting in that seat where you're at right now. Nobody. But God says, by my grace and my mercy, I saved you. It's by my grace and my mercy you're sitting here right now. It's by my grace and my mercy, by his mercy, that the word of God is going into your heart. David said, the word of God have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Once you get God's word in your heart for Christmas, amen, that's a gift that can't be taken away. Amen. Because you know what? If they take my heart away, if they take my heart out, I'm not living anyway. But if I, get, if I plant God's word in my heart, if I plant his desires, he says, I'll give you the desires of your heart as long as they line up with the, 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 the word of God. He says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And, and when your desires become like God's desires, man, you're on fire for God. Yeah. Can't no devil, demon, or, and, and nowhere stop you from entering into the presence of God. So we, we thank God this morning. We just we thank and we pray you this morning, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank and we pray you because you are Lord. You still sit on the throne. You said that, <clears throat> that you are king and you are Lord. Truth be told, Lord God, that you're doing great and mighty things behind the scenes. You said in your word that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of these folks. Lord God, what you have prepared for them. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father unless we come through you. So, Lord God, we're coming through your son, Jesus Christ, today. We uplift him today. We exalt him today. For you said, if the name of Jesus be exalted, that you would draw all men unto you. So, Lord God, we thank you that you're drawing people to you today. Help us not to bring attention to ourselves. But, Lord God, help us to be representatives, ambassadors, mouthpieces of the, of the kingdom of God. Help us to be good representatives for you. So when other people look at upon us, they'll see the light of Christ shining bright in us. So we thank and we pray you this morning for your mercy, your grace, and your kindness. And in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us on Facebook this morning. We ask that you share this video with someone. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. Make Jesus the main thing this season in your life. And watch him do great and mighty things in your life. Until next week, be safe and God bless you. Amen. Well, let's give the Lord one more hand.